Whether you like chocolate or fruity desserts, I've got you covered. Today we're gonna make some easy desserts. So first, I'm gonna start by making a decadent one, one of my favorites. We're gonna be making some peanut butter brownies. Um, I have everything laid out here. We're gonna start by melting our butter and chocolate chips. I'm actually using a double boiler to slowly melt the butter and chocolate chips. It actually helps to make the butter melt faster when you cut it into smaller pieces, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I have a stick of butter here. All right, so once you see the butter starting to melt, you're gonna add one cup of chocolate chips. So in my perfect brownie video, I said use high quality uh, chocolate, but I've discovered that using just regular old chocolate chips actually gives you a more papery, thin crackle on top, but you can definitely use your favorite chocolate. I'm just using semi-sweet here, and you need a cup. Just let it melt slowly, and then once you see it kind of pooling, just give it a good mix. So I'm actually not gonna mix it all the way just because I'm gonna let the residual heat finish melting our chocolate. So I'm gonna take it off heat right now. You just want everything to look really soft like this and it'll continue melting as we let it sit. Okay, so let's pull this off, put it on a trivet and I'm gonna let it cool a little bit before we add it into everything else. Just give it another mix, mix, mix. Okay. It looks nice and glossy. Let's just let it hang out here and then we're gonna work on the batter. So I'm gonna start by adding some eggs to a large mixing bowl. Okay, and now I'm just gonna whisk it up until it's nice and frothy. Cool. So I just like whisking it until it has like these bubbles on top. That'll help give us that crackly top, but I don't wanna incorporate too much air because then it becomes like a meringue and you don't want that. So now we're gonna add our sugars. I have some white sugar and brown sugar. If you guys want the full recipe, I'll have it in the description box below. A little bit of vanilla extract, some salt. All right, so now I'm just gonna whisk it all up one more time. So here I'm just mixing it until it becomes like a nice, thick, cohesive mixture. You don't have to worry about the sugars melting or anything. This looks about good. And then I'm gonna add in our chocolate mixture. Give it another quick stir just to make sure everything's incorporated. You can tell it's a lot cooler now. So I'm just gonna dump the whole thing into the bowl and then mix it all again. Here it'll start looking very lava-like and very goopy and that's exactly what you're looking for. And finally, to finish off our brownie batter, I'm gonna sprinkle in some flour. I like to distribute it across the bowl like this instead of just dumping it in in one go. A tiny bit of baking powder just to aerate our brownies a little bit. This will keep it from feeling really dense. And of course, some cocoa powder. And now we're just gonna mix it just until everything's incorporated. Make sure not to over mix it. And that looks really good. If you still see a little bit of lumps in there, don't even worry about it. It's kind of like pancake batter where these little lumps and bumps will just like disintegrate when you bake it off or cook it off. All right, let's transfer it into our baking pan. So whenever I make brownies or bars, I always line the baking pan with some parchment paper and I've cut it just wide enough to fit. I usually don't do both sides just because I find that the little lip on the edge right here is enough to help me lift it up. But I definitely like the sling that helps me lift everything out later. I'll show you later. Now we have our batter. I'm just gonna pour it right in. I'm just gonna spread the batter to cover the pan. And you guys are probably thinking, like, Zhang, where does the peanut butter play in? I'm about to show you. This part doesn't have to be perfect, but this looks good. Just make sure the top is nice and smooth. And then we're gonna add our peanut butter. So here I already have my peanut butter mixture. It's literally just very creamy peanut butter, and I always use the natural one where it's just peanuts and salt in the ingredients. So you can find these at like Trader Joe's, Costco. Um, and then I add a little bit of powdered sugar just to sweeten it up, but also to help it hold its structure. So what I'm gonna do is just artfully dollop some on here, and then we're gonna swirl it into the batter. Get some in the corners. 
And then to make the swirls, I just like using a chopstick and I use the larger edge just so I can have a little bit more control. And with it, I'm gonna just dip it into the peanut butter and create little swirls. This way it mixes into the batter as well. So this is where your inner Picasso really comes out. You can stop if you think that the swirls look good or you can just keep mixing it to create like a starry night type of vibe. But I think I like how this looks. And especially in this corner right here, I like how it just really like mixes in with the batter so you get some like actually inside too. All right, this looks good. So let's go ahead and bake it off. I'm gonna bake it in the oven preheated at 350 degrees for 22 minutes. So once it's done, just make sure to pull it out and let it sit and cool for one hour. I know it's gonna be hard, but trust me, it'll be so much easier to cut and enjoy afterwards. All right, so I've already let mine cool for an hour here and look how beautiful. It just, it looks beautiful. <laughs> I just love those swirls. But as I mentioned earlier, I put in the sling to make it easier to pop out. I'm gonna put it on a cutting board and also look like your pan stays clean-ish. We're gonna cut this into nine pieces. And here is our deliciously fudgy peanut butter swirled brownies. You can see the gooiness of the brownies here and then the peanut butter on top isn't super set. It's still soft, like it's, it's set, but it's not hard. I don't know how to explain it. You're just gonna have to make it yourself. But let's give it a try. Mmm, mm. ooey gooey piece of heaven. I need a glass of milk with this for sure. Mm. What'd you guys think? Are you more of a chocolate person or do you prefer fruity desserts? Actually though, I do wanna mention that even though today I made this with a peanut butter, you can totally substitute the peanut butter for salted caramel. Oh, I've done that before and it's amazing. All right, let's move on to our next dessert. If you guys thought the last recipe was easy, well, I have an even easier one that will satisfy your sweet tooth. We're gonna make a strawberry snacking cake and it's so easy. All I have to do is start by adding some butter. I'm just using half a stick of butter here into my mixing bowl. It's at room temperature, so it's nice and soft. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar. Then with my hand mixer, I'm just gonna mix, mix, mix. Once it starts to look nice and fluffy like this, I'm gonna stop and then scrape down the bowl. Okay. And then I'll add one egg at room temperature. I'll give it another good mix. Oh, and I'll just mix it just until it looks nice and really like this. And now we add in our flavorings. I have some vanilla extract. And then to make the cake taste really light and bright and really bring out the flavors of the strawberry, I'm gonna add zest from a lemon. Just maybe like a teaspoon. Last mix. And now I'm just gonna set this aside and trade it with our flour. So for the flour, there's not much that I have to do with it, but I do like to mix all the dry ingredients together before mixing it with our egg mixture. So to this bowl, I'm gonna add some baking powder and a little bit of salt and just mix it all up. Okay. Now to mix everything together, I'm actually gonna alternate between the flour and the milk. Just a little bit of flour and milk, a little bit of milk and flour until it's nice and uh, combined. <laughs> I mixed it just until it started to incorporate and now I'm gonna add our strawberries. I've already cut the strawberries up into quarters and we'll just mix it right in. You notice the batter is quite thick, but don't worry about that. It's gonna bake off beautifully into a nice, light, airy cake. Just spread it out. And sometimes I do like using an offset spatula just scrape everything and smooth it out. And then even though we see a lot of strawberries on the top layer, I like to add a little bit more. I saved a little bit from earlier and I'm just gonna take a 
few and just dollop them right on top. And I like the outsides of the strawberries to show through instead of like the inside part. So, and the reason why I'm doing this is because once you bake it up, the ones that you see at the bottom mixed into the cake is going to sink down. And then what you'll get on top is just like this really beautiful pattern. That looks good. Finally, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of sugar on top so that you get this nice sugary crust and it also helps to brown the cake a little bit better. And I'm just gonna bake this off in my oven preheated at 350 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes. And trust me, you're gonna wanna stick around in the kitchen because it is gonna smell so sweet and delicious, similar to your favorite bakery. The smell of the roasted strawberries just smells so good. So our snacking cake is done. It's completely cooled. And as you can see, it's just beautiful and delicious looking. I cannot wait to dig in. So typically for snacking cakes, you can just cut right into it and grab like a square and enjoy it. But I thought we should judge it up, make it a little bit more special, you know? So I'm gonna place it into a bowl. I'm gonna build something similar to a strawberry shortcake or like a light chiffon strawberry cake because I love all of those things. So I'm gonna get a little bit of whipped cream right on top and then cover it with some more fresh strawberries. very light. It definitely reminds me of a strawberry shortcake, but it's just so like flavorful. And then the hint of lemon in there just like brightens everything up. This is definitely a cake that I can eat without waiting for the big celebration. I hope you guys enjoy these dessert ideas. If you guys have some more ideas that you want me to share with you, let me know by commenting below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.